So this video is for do-it-yourselfers who are familiar with some basic tools. You'll need a saw, a drill, a vise is really helpful, um, and a jigsaw would be really helpful. But it isn't too hard. At the same time, it's not super simple. I didn't go through every detail for a beginner. So if you're not familiar with using these tools, this probably isn't for you. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. You can watch it and find out. The main goal I had here was to build one of these water toys to use that would be durable and if not durable, easily repaired. The ones that we that I've bought online rust out and break. They're like $60, $70, $80 and you can't find parts to repair them. This is made with over-the-counter parts at the hardware store. Uh, the main functioning parts here that might possibly break are each less than five dollars so if it breaks it gets damaged you go buy a new part for five dollars and replace it that was the goal this may or may not be something that's very interesting to you but if you like to build things like i do you can do this and give your dog some fun okay gonna go over the materials first this uh pvc trim board is a half inch by 12 inch um close to it you get it at uh, home depot uh, you have to buy a long length of it. Unfortunately, you don't be, need very much of it. And then there's this smaller piece of trim here. You can see is three quarters by one and a half. I'd get a piece of that too. Most of the hardware that you need, um, that's an extra part there. So got these four bolts. You can see they're carriage bolts, some washers and nuts for those. I have these machine screws here, they're three quarter inch, and I have some lock bolts here to go on the end of them lock nuts, sorry. Um, this is a drip irrigation pressure reducer, it costs about five bucks at uh, Home Depot. And if you want to go to Lowe's, you can pay $10 for the same thing. This is a, just a valve like you stick on the end of any garden hose. Um, you can get by with the cheaper one that doesn't have the swivel on the end, but it will make your life a little easier. It's some hinges. I'm going to use these this time. I've made a couple of other prototypes with other hinges. Uh, you can get ones that are this shape if you want. Don't think they're necessary, and these are way too big. Uh, these are uh, two inch hinges. You need a sprayer. This is a Menlar sprayer. It's not that important, I'm guessing. It just needs to be the kind that has this uh, valve at the back. Not the kind that have that on the front, because you're going to break this off, and that's integral to the design. You'll need this uh, some of this PVC. Probably only need six or eight inches of it, but of course you'll be stuck probably buying a lot more. This is uh, two and a half inch, the outer diameter, I believe. It's a uh, two inch inner diameter. You'll need some tools, of course. And let's see if that works. Uh, extra things you're going to need some half inch screws galvanized. You need about six, maybe four, six of these. Hey, this just reminded me of something I forgot to mention. You need a piece of aluminum. This is just a flat bar of aluminum, it's not very expensive. So, first thing you need to do is cut off a length of this. Um, from my prototypes, eight, eight and a half inches turns out to be good. You have to have room for the hinges, so it depends on how wide the mount is on your hinges, and I can show that later. So first I'm just going to cut two eight and a quarter, so I decided to go with here. need two of them, and they need to be the same size. They're really close. Okay, I also cut these two off the camera. These are um, cut from the same strip of wood. They are three and three eighths long. I cut them at an angle, you don't have to. Cut them at uh, three and three eighths. If you wanna cut them at an angle, uh, you can cut them at the bottom at three and five eighths. It's a 15 degree angle. So get two of these. Next step here is to line up your blocks of wood like this. I'm putting the hinge down here to see about where it'll be so I can, they're gonna eventually be screwed in here. I'm gonna drill a hole, and I wanna make sure that the hole is not in the way of those. And I'm gonna just line these up. 
and once I get it lined up, I'm going to clamp it down so I can drill some holes without them shifting around. I'll do that to both sides. And drill on both sides. Turns out the bolt length you need is actually, um, you need it to be two and a quarter. I changed the design a little bit from when I filmed the part with the parts, so you need four two and a quarter bolts. So now you're going to need to mark the center line the top of your board to cut out an area on one of these pieces. So find your center point, mark it using lead is advised. And then you need a piece that's exactly, turns out to be a piece with two and a half inches wide centered on that, you need to mark it. You're going to cut this out using a jigsaw, scroll saw, whatever you have. You can use a coping saw if you have one. So I've got set up here a 5 8 inch drill bit. So I'm going to come in about half that distance from the corners on this piece of scrap I'm using here to demonstrate how to cut this. I can tell you why later. Just punch in a little hole to drive it. I got a jigsaw here with a uh, justice uh, universal blade. It's kind of fine. It might be a metal cutting blade. It doesn't matter. One thing to keep in mind is this plastic will melt. So high speed doesn't help you. It actually fuses it back together. So use a slow speed and just cut this notch out. As you can see, melt it a little bit, we're good there. Some of the color coming through is because on the back of this board was a test for some painting I was doing. Some of that color is just coming through. So there you have that. This could be sanded with ordinary sandpaper. So this is pretty important to get five inches. Tried to cut that pretty close to right on five inches. All right, so now what we need to do is cut a slot out of this. It needs to be three quarters of an inch wide, no wider, and two and a half inches deep. So I have a piece of scrap wood here that's three quarters inch. I find it easier that way. And I usually like to mark it out on this part that has writing on there because who wants to see that? So what I'll do is just mark each side of this to get my two parallel lines that I'm going to cut on. And uh, then I go ahead and measure out two and a half inches down to know where to stop. Then the next thing you want to do, then again, you want to drill your turnaround holes for your jigsaw. I'm using a brad tip drill bit. This plastic tube can be a little bit ornery. Uh, you could use a fine drill to drill yourself a little pilot hole there. Then you're going to use some pretty rough grit sandpaper. Smooth these edges up. Now that you cut that slot, you're going to repeat almost the exact process, but you want to start from the opposite end, not up here, down here, 
on the other side. So we're going to cut an inch slot now and go up two inches this way. We got it, slot on each side, pretty exciting so far. Okay, now we're gonna take the handle off of this. Um, you can take this nut off of your the back of your sprayer and don't lose it. Who knows what thread count it is or how hard it would be to find one. Set that side so we're safe. And then we're gonna take some, uh, oh, some wire cutters is what I use to get this off here. You can uh, leave this on here, it won't be exposed, or you can keep going and trim any little piece of plastic you have left off there. Not necessary here, but I have this, uh, I don't know what you call this. Use a sandpaper disc, use your hand, or you could just skip rounding it out at all. Once that's done, take your uh, sprayer, it should be kind of stiff to put down in here. It should sit right down in there like that. Now, under here, you can see it is the handle that you broke off. If you push it in far enough, you should be able to go past that. And it should fit right about like that. Okay, I bolted that on there. If you're OCD like me, you're going to lose sleep tonight over that. Anyway. Now, this piece I mentioned here goes in here. It's got room for the handle. This piece is going to get attached here on a hinge so that it can move. Do that next. Okay, you probably don't have a CNC machine, but this part's fun to watch anyway. So. We're going to mark the holes to drill, pre-drill for these hinges. And we're going to set the hinges on here like this. You can see how the holes going this way are going to miss that bolt because of what we did earlier. And I'll leave about an eighth of an inch here and I'll mark a circle. Now, the way I'm positioning this hinge, it's going to rise above this a little bit, which will make it visible, which you may not like, but actually is not a problem, number one. And number two, it allows these holes that I'm drilling to be centered on this piece of material, not more towards the edge. So I have the appropriate size drill. I'm using this little small screwdriver I have because the my hand drill is too fat to allow me up against that. It happens to be just the right length to pre-drill. And I will then pre-drill these holes So next thing to do, we're taking the top. I keep this textured side down on all of this because it's got grooves, little textures in it that are gonna make it harder to clean. So I figured the slick side should be on top. In any case, I've got it like right up there. I got a block under here to hold it because I'm going to mark these holes for pre-drilling also. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna be using nuts, not screws because this is so short, I don't think there's enough depth for the screws to really hold. So we're just gonna go all the way through drilling these. So it's here, here where these uh, 
three quarter inch machine screws, nuts, lap washers, equipment to play. Um, drilled this hole a little bit tight, so uh, I have to screw them in so just let them slip in. Okay, let's move on to the aluminum. This is going to have to go over this threaded screw right here, so we need to drill a hole. Not too critical here, and I haven't cut this to length yet. You want to probably cut it about a quarter inch, drill about a quarter inch in like that. Basically, once you make this hole, it's going to help you figure out how to cut the rest of it. So. You don't need a drill press, but if you doubt it, might as well use it. Take this place, set it into its slot there. Take the aluminum pole rod. As you see, it'll go in here, slide over that. And once we attach it to this paddle here, when the dog steps on it, it'll pull it down. So just lining it up right now as you can see this length isn't too important but I'm gonna put several screws in here because they're gonna be very short I don't want a bunch of bolts on the top so I'm just trying to get the length so when we grab a pencil uh, not where you're gonna see it now and I'll just mark this off here and cut it about an inch in. Now this piece isn't uh, visible and it's on the underside and uh, it sh can't really be lift up, lifted up so these edges aren't too critical. If you have a hand file or some coarse sandpaper I'd probably still sand them down. I'm going to do it on my grinder. Making sure that none of the edges are sharp. In case some weird something happens and somehow the dog gets underneath it. I don't know. Shouldn't happen, but you know how that goes. All right, so when I put these in, I'm going to be using these screws I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to put several of them because they're only going to be able to go in here a less than half an inch. And uh, I'm just going to drill some holes in here to slide them through. We'll mark it off, so we'll do that next. First, we're going to take that, put it in there, take the hole on the end, slide it over that, then position this so that there's it's right in the middle, slide around a little bit, make sure there's some clearance all the way around. And then the middle bar is in a place where it has a little bit of play. Now, in this case here, because depending where you cut the slot, it may not be perfectly straight down the middle, but it, that doesn't matter. It'll work fine without it. In fact, mine is off about a 10 degree angle. Maybe not that much. So I got lined up about how I want it. I'm just going to clamp it in position here just to make it easier for me to mark it. So I can lift it up enough to. piece was under here like this. I'm just putting it over the holes to make sure they didn't move while I was marking them and I could see all four holes. Let me mark this one just a little bit better. And I'm going to pre-drill these also. Again, I don't want to go all the way through the wood so we'll just mark the drill bit. that we have this take the piece here slide it into place now I'm gonna put a lock washer on here now one of the things that I found you can't do 
if you screw it too tight, depending on how you have it adjusted, it might just run all the time. So you need a little room to play with it. Um, and it seems you're not cinching it down. I don't know if a lock washer will do any good, but there is going to be pressure on this constantly. Um, so I think the lock washer will keep it from spinning. So I would suggest that you use a lock washer. Put this guy up. Put the washer on. So you really can't see that very well, I'm sure. And just put on this nut that came with it. So, when you're done with this, if you have it right, it shouldn't be touching the ground. I can tighten it up a little more. However, if it's not quite the right height for you, what you can do is bend that piece of aluminum really easily. This is left over from a prototype I made. What you can see here is, is that I miscalculated the height. So I bent the end, and I adjusted it that way. You could adjust it that way if you needed to. So it, there is some reasonable ability to adjust it if you don't get that perfect. Looks like in this case, the measurements I gave you should be pretty good. That's basically it. Talk about a few things we got here. So this pressure reducer allows you to adjust this so that it doesn't shoot 100 feet high or you know blast the dog in the face it needs to go on this end of a hose if you put the pressure reducer on the other end of the hose the hose has an elasticity to it it builds up pressure kind of defeats the whole purpose so you do need to put it right here and by putting this valve here it'll allow you to adjust it which i'll show you in a, when i demo this um, this valve here you can tweak and get just the right amount that you want uh, there is one final piece that, that I put on here on one of my early prototypes. What I noticed is that the dogs who couldn't figure this out got frustrated. So they'd start gnawing on this. And this selector dial here, which is also cool, gives you some options I'll show you later, is soft rubber and, and easily damaged. So I bought this adapter. It goes from this 2.5 inch, inch tube up to a 3 or 4 inch size. You can find that at the store. Put that over the top. Its only purpose is to keep the dog from chewing on that. Now, this is left over from my other prototype, so it already has the hole pre-drilled. Because the dog would just pull that off, I to put two short little screws in here to hold it in place. So you don't have to drill in very far. This is the actual tape I left on from doing the underside part there. Doing this within here, don't drill too far, drill into your uh, sprayer and run it. Um, this is, like I said, a $5 part. This one's a little more expensive because it's brass. That's a $5 part at Home Depot. This sprayer is a $5 part. Um, I don't know why any of the rest of this would break. So, again, back to my original point here was building something that you assume eventually is going to get torn up. It might get chewed up. It might look ugly. We'll have to see. Um, but if anything breaks, it's $5. If, if this sprayer stops spraying, basically undo one nut, take the sprayer out, buy another one, screw it back in. You have to break the handle off like we did earlier, and then it's brand new and the, the main functioning part is replaced. Um, the ones that I bought online cost 60 to $80, rusted out, worked like crap, and were unrepairable after that. So I just figure I'll keep fixing this one. We'll see how it goes. Now, I would suggest this valve is likely to be mostly closed as your first idea. As your first. And that's just not enough. Sneak it a little more. That's water fountain level. They might not get the dogs as excited as if you just give it a little more pressure. And here's something that dogs might find interesting. You can just reach in there and change that knob. Give them some other stuff to play with. That's a mister. 
another mister. Probably this one will get the most excitement. Have fun.